Good afternoon and good evening. My name is Carlos Lassiter and I serve as Assistant Vice President for Student Engagement in the Office of Campus Life. Thank you for joining our student webinar today. We realize the AU's announcement last week may have created stress and anxiety for you and your family. We also realize that you all were looking forward to returning to campus or beginning your college experience. We too are saddened that we will be unable to provide a college experience for you this fall. Your health and safety are of utmost concern as we manage uncertainties created by this pandemic. We miss you and we look forward to seeing you on campus soon. The webinar today is an opportunity for us to provide updates from our respective areas and to address your concerns. We will begin with panelist introductions and then follow with specific information being provided by each panelist. Next will be a Q&A session and we're asking for you to please to submit your questions in the question um, area of the chat box. At this time, I will ask each panelist to provide self introductions, starting with Jeff. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome. We are so glad to see you here today. Um, my name is Jeff Brown. I serve as the Dean of Students here at American University. Uh, and I look forward to talking with you briefly about some of the health, well being, and support uh, pieces that we will have in place for you in this fall. So, thank you for being here. Ashley. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Ashley Boltershek. I use any and all pronouns, and I'm the Senior Associate Director for Residence Life. And looking forward to hearing some of your questions tonight. Martin. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Stagdorf, and I'm the Associate Director of um, uh, Housing and Residence Life. And I'm going to talk about some of the pieces with um, our shift away from the residential experience this semester and off-campus housing. Jessica. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Waters. I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Education and Vice Provost for Academic Student Services. I'll talk a bit about the academic experience in the fall. Shirley. Hi everyone, my name is Shirley McDonald. I'm an Associate Director in the Financial Aid Office and tonight I'll talk a little bit about how um, this change may impact financial aid. Okay, and Janelle. Hi everyone, I'm Janelle Clothier. I'm the director of A Central, and I'm going to talk a little bit about your student account uh, and some of the things that you'll see on your student bill. Thank you for the introductions. At this time, the panelists will share information from their respective areas. We're gonna start with the Dean of Students, Jeff. Sure, thank you, Carlos. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Um, I'm here representing a few different areas, not only including the Dean of Students area, but also some of our health and well-being areas. So I wanna cover uh, as a kind of introductory comments before our Q&A, really three areas with you. Um, first off and, for, and foremost is to let you know that we are, we are still here for you. Despite being virtual this um, semester, um, all of the areas surrounding health, well-being, um, and you'll hear later about academic support are still here and available for you. Um, for those of you who are not new students, the services will remain pretty much like they were back in March when we went to a virtual online um, environment. So know that um, most of those uh, will still continue to exist as we move into the fall semester. Um, and I'll talk about one major exception here in my third point. Um, the second point I want you to, to know and to hear is that the best place to look in terms of accessing areas such as the Counseling Center, the Dean of Students Office, our Health Promotions and Advocacy Center, um, International Students and Scholar Services, um, is to check the website. So a lot of time and effort has gone into making sure our websites are up to date and including the ways you can contact each of these offices and access our services. Um, and we are working diligently to make sure those are up to date as we embark on the fall semester. Um, the third area, I wanna talk specifically about the student health area because this area is a little bit different um, in terms of how it'll operate. Um, this is one of the areas on our campus that will continue to operate and hold um, in-person services on our campus. So a few pieces I want you to be aware of is number one, um, we will have COVID-19 testing available to all of our students should you choose to be in the DC area and wish to be tested. That will be available Monday through Friday um, at our Student Health Center on campus. Uh, when the fall semester begins, the, the Student Health Center will be open from 8 till 5.30, Monday through Friday. We will be able to see students in person by appointment in the Student Health Center. And again, the best way to, to access those appointments is to go to the website to um, find out how to make an appointment, whether it's calling or email. 
I also want to let you know that the um, we will have telehealth services available through the Student Health Center for our students who are in the District of Columbia. And that same would be true if you are accessing the psychiatry services offered through um, the Student Health Center. Those would be available um, for students in the District of Columbia through, um, through virtual means. So again, I wanted to provide you the specifics there, um, and I look forward to any questions you may have related to these areas or anything I can help you with. So thank you all. Thank you, Jeff. Next, we'll hear from a resident slide. Thanks so much, Carlos. Hi again, everyone. Um, so you have been bearing with us for months now. You've had many iterations of emails from us about what we were hoping our fall would look like. And I think we it is safe to say that we all are really experiencing the loss of fall right alongside with you. We wanted you here, we wanted you in our communities, and we wanted you experiencing AU and all that DC has to offer by way of being here on campus. We are still excited about whenever we are cleared to be able to bring you back to campus. And so please know that our team is working diligently to make sure that we can set you up for success once you're able to come to campus. Um, that means that we'll be continuing to support you remotely as well for all of your residence life and housing related questions, or if you're not sure where to go and you need some support, we will try to get you connected with the right people. And so please don't hesitate to reach out. One of the things that we know is that this has been incredibly stressful for all of our students and their families. And so we're trying to make things as easy as possible when it comes to the transition into being, being fully remote and online. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Martin to share a little bit about some of the efforts we've put into place to make this transition as smooth as possible for you all. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah, so I'll touch on a few pieces. I uh, will start kind of as Ashley noted that for those of you who had a um, fall housing assignment with us as of the end of last week, um, we worked very hard to um, plan and organize um, things for you. So, you know, really we want your, your focus to be on your academics and getting excited for the coming year. So with that in mind, I'm going to touch on a few points. And um, I will also note that all of this was in an email that we sent to anyone with a housing assignment last Thursday. So you should have received that. Um, however, if you didn't, um, all of this, uh, including a copy of that email, can be found on the homepage of our website, uh, and I believe that will get dropped in the, uh, the chat for all of you to, to re uh, look at as I'm going through here. So some of the key points that I wanted to note are, um, so for everyone who had a housing assignment, we've already canceled your housing assignment and um, taken the fees off. We did that as of last Thursday, so that was within a few hours of um, the announcement going out so we were very quick on that and um, while our partners in dining aren't here um, i can also confirm that they did that very quickly i believe all of those fees were off as of about last friday um, so all of that should be taken care of and we'll talk a little bit more about billing kind of as we go through this session but that was one of the big pieces for you you don't need to cancel or do anything we've taken care of it for you um, in terms of our ship ahead program which um, we had set up where students were able to send items ahead to campus uh, i want to acknowledge that we have as of last Thursday, stopped accepting things on campus. Um, so anything that was received um, should already be on its way back to sender and anything um, that had previously been received um, should have already been returned to sender as well. So with that in mind, if you sent something from your home address, uh, those packages will be sent right back to you. And if you send something through a vendor, so for example, you know, Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond, um, we sent that back to those specific vendors. So on that end, we just need you to you know, go to those vendors, cancel your order, that they'll receive it back and that should take care of um, those concerns. Um, other than that, I will note that if you um, rented something from a My Fridge Rental, so a, um, a fridge or a lockbox or um, OCM, which is our betting uh, vendor that we work with, those vendors should be reaching out to all of you. If you haven't heard from them already, you'll hear very soon. Um, and they're gonna give you a couple options on what you can do, which um, includes for both of them a full refund. So we have that set up for you as well. We have some other additional information about um, any of our returning students. So if you were here in the spring and your items were stored with UPS, uh, we've worked with them and have a web link to their site with some options for you also included on our webpage. So all of that has been set up and taken care of for you. Um, so please you know, review that, share that with family, um, and definitely um, you know, let us know if you have any questions there. So the next piece I wanted to touch on is that uh, we have shared information about emergency housing. So if anyone, um, needs emergency housing for the fall semester. We also have that information on the same page of our website. So please take a look at that and um, reach out to the emergency housing committee with that request and they'll get back to you. Uh, the next big one is, you know, we're getting many questions about what will spring look like. 
So at this point, we're letting you know that um, we're, you know, we are excited to have you back. We're looking forward to it, um, but we're still waiting for some of those details to get, you know, ironed out so we can give you a concrete, you know, piece of information and a process to move on. So right now we're expecting to share out those details in early November. So just keep your um, eye on an email from us when that goes out and we'll our webpage. And then other than that, um, I do also want to acknowledge that we provide some support for off-campus students. So we've had questions from students regarding off-campus leases. Um, so we have a pretty extensive set of resources for you um, right off of the Housing Residence Life homepage as well. And you can um, access those, including um, a specific webinar that we'll be holding tomorrow night, uh, Wednesday the 5th. Um, so again, if that's of interest, I would point you there to guide there. And then other than that, kind of as everyone will say, uh, please reach out to us if you need anything. We have um, a chat that's available from 10 to 4 um, every day during the week, and we also have our email and phone, so we're, we're here if you need anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Next, we will hear from Academic Affairs. Hi again, everyone. I'm Jessica Waters. Um, I wanted to touch on three things today. Uh, one, to talk about what the academic experience will look like in terms of classes in the fall. Um, two, to talk about academic support, and then three, to, to briefly start a conversation around how we form community in this online setting. Um, we've heard from so many of you that like that's the thing you're most concerned about, right? How do we do this? How do we still connect with our people? How do we make sure that we're having that college experience at AU that we all want? Um, so want to touch on, on those three things. Um, first, on the question of classes, as you are probably well aware, um, our classes will be online this fall. Um, so when you go to the schedule of classes, you should be able to look at each of your individual classes. And what you will hopefully see is that we have attempted to hold the schedule of classes as steady as possible. What I mean by that is this. If you had previously registered for a class that was scheduled to meet, for example, in person on Tuesdays at five o'clock or was scheduled to meet um, online in a synchronous setting um, on Tuesdays at five o'clock, it should still be at that same time. What we wanted to do was to make sure that we didn't mess with your schedules too much, right? Recognizing that there was already so much change happening, we wanted you to have certainty around those pieces. So the classes that you were already registered for, you are still registered for, and they are still meeting at the same time with the same faculty members. So please do rest assured that that remains constant. Um, another thing that we are holding constant, and again, this is so we can have certainty and people can plan, is the academic calendar. So when you go on the website and you look at the academic calendar for the semester, our first day of classes remains the same, our last day of classes remains the same, the final exam schedule remains the same. We want you to be able to plan and think through what the course of the semester will look like, so we're holding all of that steady. Um, likewise, when you think about the different deadlines that come up over the course of the semester, so you think about the last day to add a class, or you think about the last day to change to a pass-fail option or an A-through-F option, or the last day to withdraw from a class, all of those are already indicated on the academic calendar. Again, we're trying to hold that as constant as possible to give all of you as much certainty as possible. Um, you'll recall, um, for those of you who joined us, who were with us last semester, um, we did pivot with some of the academic calendars because we were in such an emergent situation, right? We had to move very quickly from an in-person setting to an online setting. So we extended deadlines, we extended the pass-fail options. Um, we are not currently planning to do that in the fall. So in the fall, we're trying to have as much of a normal semester as possible. The academic calendar is set and the deadlines for things like grade type changes and the like are set. So you can trust in that calendar and you can trust in those deadlines and you can trust in the class times um, that are posted on the schedule of classes. Another piece I wanted to highlight is something that I know so many of you rely on, and that's the academic support and services across campus. Um, I want to be um, as clear as possible as I can with all of you about all of that is still in place. So if you're thinking about how much you rely on your academic advisor, whether it's your first year advisor or your advisor in SAS, your advisor in College of Arts and Sciences, we know how important that relationship is and all of the academic advisors are prepared to offer the full range of services online virtually. They will still be having one-on-one -on -one appointments. They'll still be doing group advising. They'll still be doing all of the advising work that you um, are expecting and are accustomed to. Um, likewise, with our academic support across campus. So, for example, our writing center will be at 100% operations, right? So they will be doing their appointments virtually. 
but there to support students in the same way um, the Writing Center always has been. Um, likewise, with quantitative support, academic coaching, tutoring, supplemental instruction, all of those services remain completely available. So as you're thinking about your classes and you're thinking about interacting with your faculty and how to succeed in those classes, all of those services um, are ready to go and here to support you. Um, and importantly, have spent the summer, much like our faculty, really thinking through what does that support look like online, right? How do we have to change how we support students given that we won't be in the same room with students? So all of the offices across campus have been doing that work all summer, um, as have our faculty uh, with their classes. So. Um, First two topics, classes, right? Holding as steady as we can, prepared to offer a top-notch online um, education in each of our classes. Um, importantly, when we think about each of our degrees across campus, we have endeavored to make sure that every degree remains stable. Meaning if you need certain classes to graduate in December, we're gonna make sure you have them. If you need certain classes to make sure that you stay on your pre-med track, um, for the next couple of years, we'll make sure that you have them. So making sure that um, all of our classes across all degrees and programs are being offered. Academic support to back it up. Um, and then third, this question of uh, community and how do we how do we do that virtually? Um, how do I do that if I'm in a learning community? How do I do that if I am a student who's interested in service opportunities? Um, how do we figure out internships? What are all those pieces that we tend to think of as in-person? How do we form that community online? Um, and a piece of, of, of advice that I heard, and this really resonated with me and I wanted to share with all of you, um, is when you think about the transition to college, right? Whether you're entering for the first time or you're coming back as a junior or senior, um, and you think about the experiences of the last spring, what y'all have proven is how resilient you are, right? And college is about transitions and college is about um, figuring out what's that next step and what do I do when the thing that I thought was the next step isn't, right? And whether that's you're changing your major or we're going to an online setting or your living experience is not going to look like what you thought it was going to, what we're doing in this whole setting is resilience, we're pivoting and we're rolling with these transitions. And what we want you to hear is that you've got the support network to back you up, right? As we move to online classes, as we um, pivot to online service opportunities, maybe you're not tutoring the student in DC public schools in person, but you better believe they need it online, right? Now more than ever. Um, as we're thinking about working with community partners, as we're thinking about internships, and you're thinking about, okay, how do I do an internship in a virtual setting? Um, we're here to back you up on all of that. So when we think about the pieces of that academic experience, the classes, the support, the community, it's going to look different, but the resources and supports are here and we are right in the fight with you. Thank you, Jessica. Next we'll hear from financial aid. Hi everyone, it's Charlene. And I am going to reiterate much of what Jessica has just said, which is very much, we're all here for you. Um, and like Ashley said to begin with, we miss you. We wanted to see you and we were looking forward actually to getting that chance. But guess what? We are moving forward um, and the financial aid office is here for you as well. We have all of our counseling staff, although we're working remotely, you can reach us Monday through Friday um, and uh, contact us directly um, and contact your counselor directly. Um, by going to our main page, the financial aid um, homepage, and clicking on contact us and just entering the first letter of your last name to find your counselor. Their direct line is actually listed on that site. Um, there are lots of questions, but we do our very best to try and get back to our students within a day or two at the most. So please reach out if you have questions. Um, we know that this is a confusing time and we want to make sure that we're there to support you. So that's a very first piece. The next thing though, and the biggest misconception I think that a lot of our students and families have um, is that assuming because we've changed the modality of instruction, because we've gone um, online for all of our classes that it's going to impact your financial aid. As a matter of fact, it doesn't at all. Um, what you need to know is that we have assumed that our students and families are all going to incur costs for their books, for tuition, for housing, for meals. And so your financial aid was actually awarded to help you cover all of those costs. 
Um, and so uh, the aid that you've been awarded remains. Um, the only case in which we would have to change um, the financial aid that you've received um, is if you're receiving a tuition award, a tuition-based award, it's what we call tuition restricted scholarship or grant um, that exceeds the cost of tuition. There has been a 10% discount. And so for students who had received a scholarship award up to the previous tuition amount, um, it has now decreased to the current tuition amount because tuition-based awards can exceed tuition. And so that's really the only case in which you would see a change um, in your aid. Um, the other question that we are fielding now um, is, um, what am I supposed to do um, about housing or about my costs? And as I mentioned before, we're assuming that all of our students and families will continue to have living expenses. Um, it's only if you contact our office and say very directly that, hey, I'm living at home with my parents um, as a commuter, um, that we will then update your cost of attendance to a lower cost of attendance and uh, adjust your aid accordingly because you can't receive aid in excess of your cost. Um, so that's the other major question that we've received. And then finally, we have students um, who, you know, they're looking at their financial aid award and saying, I am a federal work study recipient and I was looking forward to working, but I, I won't have that opportunity. Please reach out to our office. We understand that there are challenges around that process. The good news though, is that we are creating positions for our students to work remotely. So all of those um, positions will be listed very shortly and they'll be on um, the student job site so that you can view and begin to apply for those positions. Um, there is a specific restriction for federal work study positions, um, which um, if you're not uh, located in or will not for the fall be located in the Maryland, DC, or Virginia area, um, you will not be able to use your work study, but we understand that and you should reach out to your financial aid counselor um, to help you understand what options are available to ensure that you have all the support, all the financial support that you'll need in order to get through the semester. Um, and so just keep in mind though, that aid is awarded based on the semester. Uh, and so your fall aid will disperse um, at the end of this month, once classes begin. Um, and that's when you can anticipate um, your financial aid dispersing and um, for your um, refunds, if you're anticipating receiving money back to be processed. And with that, I'm going to allow my colleague, uh, Janelle, uh, to talk a little bit about that whole process. Great, thank you, Shirlene. Hi, everyone. Again, I'm Janelle Clothier. I'm the director of AU Central. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we're the Integrated uh, Student Services Center. We work with registration, your bill, benefits um, and any question that you might have if you don't know where to go um, we're not necessarily the people that can fix it or um, are the ones that um, can respond to it but we know who on campus can so we're always a good starting point to help you make the right referral to get you where you need to go um, as all of you have probably taken a look at your uh, student account activity in Eagle service what you should see now is that your tuition has been reduced by the 10 percent that if you had a housing contract or a meal plan, they have been, uh, been taken off your bill as well. Um, the student activity fee has been adjusted and the sports center fee has been taken off your account as well. So we have been having all these moving pieces and as a result have extended the August 1st bill due date to August 12th. So as you're looking at your account activity, there might be two things that are probably sticking out in your mind. What about my health insurance? And what about my UPASS? Uh, the health insurance, there is a waiver uh, option for you if you have coverage through your member of your family or other coverage. Um, the waiver is due on September 18th. So that's important to keep an eye out for uh, your health insurance. If you are not in the DC area, Virginia or Maryland, and you will not be using a UPASS to take the Metro or buses in the city, 
Um, there will also be a waiver for that process. It has not been made available yet, but it will be in the frequently asked questions on the homepage and on the parking homepage. So keep an eye out for that. So those are the two things that are probably on your mind. Uh, for the U-Pass, the waiver deadline, the deadline they're talking about is September 21st, which is at the end of that drop. So those are the two things that are probably still out there and on your mind. Um, as far as any of students that have signed up for a monthly payment plan, it has been adjusted to incorporate the new removal of fees and the new tuition rate. So your payment plan should be all set. And if you've already paid your student account and you now have a credit on your account um, because of the tuition discount, the counts, the canceling of your housing or meal, <clears throat> um, the Office of Student Accounts is working right now to start working on those uh, refunds to you. It's important um, if you would like your money sooner rather than later, your refund, that you go into Eagle Service and sign up for ACH. It'll direct deposit it into your checking account. If that's not something that you are interested in doing and you would rather have a paper check issued, again, it's important for the, you to go in and make sure that your permanent address on file is up to date because we want to get that check to you to the right address. Um, but our student account colleagues are going to start issuing those starting this Friday. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is for those families that may have used 529 educational uh, prepaid plans, if your uh, student account has been paid with that 529 money and you are going to be getting a refund, you may want to touch base with the 529 plan to ask them what their requirements are on that refunded money. Um, the only other thing is if you're an international student and you would like your refund sent via wire transfer, um, we would encourage you to contact AU Central. If you've contacted us in the past to ask about this, please do so again, um, because now that we're going to be issuing them, we can issue a wire transfer to you. And there's some specific information that we need to get from you in order to issue that. Um, but again, those are kind of the, the high points as far as your, your bill and your account activity. And uh, I hope I've answered your questions, but I'm here if you have any others. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Next, we will move to our Q&A session. Um, there's still time to submit questions, so please use the question tab to submit any questions that you have. The first question is a financial aid question. Will outside scholarships that were received in the first semester be transferred, placed, or second semester fees? That's a really good question, and it all depends, believe it or not, on what your scholarship agency has indicated. Um, if the agency indicated that they would like the, the, um, the award to apply to the fall, um, if you're enrolled, we will apply the award to the fall semester. However, if you're not enrolled, if you're on a leave, what we do is we return the funding back to the scholarship agency, um, at which point they'll either reissue it for the spring and have it credit um, during the spring, um, but that it that all is depending all dependent on what the scholarship agency has indicated in their letter of notification to AU um, on how we should apply the funds. Absent any letter, um, we equally um, disperse the funds. We'll we'll assume that the the full funding has come in and disperse the funds one half in the fall, one half in the spring. Thank you, Charlene. The next question is a student billing AU Central question. I sent a check for our 529 plan to the school, but it has not cleared yet. What would happen with that? So um, I, we're not returning checks, so it, it will get sent to your account and then we will issue the refund in seven to 10 business days. So again, it's important for those families that have 529 that have come in to work with the, the 529 plan to let them know that the refund is coming back. Um, that's, what, that's what the process is for right now. It'll be applied to your student account. Thank you. We have another financial aid question. Can we not take the subs subs subsidized loan at this time if already accepted but not received? I am happy that you asked that question. It's actually a really good question you're not required to take any aid um, that you don't need. And so, um, yes, if you would like to cancel a portion of your loan, a fall portion of your loan, please just send an email to us at financialaid.american.edu. It'll be directly routed to your counselor 
Um, or you can go into the MyAU portal and decline, you know, either the fall portion or the entire loan if, you're, if you no longer need those funds. So we encourage our students to take a look and really only borrow what you need. Um, and if you're questioning whether or not mm, I do need this loan, I don't need this loan, contact us. We'll help you to help you figure it out um, and to determine, okay, this is what your bill will look like if you decide to take a certain action. So um, feel free to, to go ahead and contact us with your questions. Otherwise, you can simply send us an email indicating the amount that you'd like for us to cancel, the term in which you'd like us to cancel um, the loan, uh, and we'll take care of that for you. Thank you, Charlene. Um, the next two questions uh, focus on um, CIS, our Center for Student Involvement. Um, as a first year student, uh, one of the biggest pieces of the college experience is looking forward to clubs and extracurriculars. How will first year students be able to explore and join clubs this semester? Um, I've sent a link to you all um, about the virtual resources within CSI. And I've also uh, stated that there will be a virtual involvement fair on August the 27th. So please use those links to find out more about clubs and extracurricular activities that you can take advantage of um, this fall. Additionally, there was another question asking if clubs and activities um, this semester will be virtually or be canceled until the spring. All of those will be held virtually. We have another financial aid question. I took out a private student loan. I took out a private student loan to pay, so now I am overborrowing. Will I receive a refund directly or will it be sent back to my private loan company? Okay, so I think the question is, I've borrowed funding from a private lender. I've borrowed more um, than the, the amount, I guess, that's been charged to your account. Um, we would not approve um, the funding beyond the cost of attendance. So if you're receiving funding from this loan to help you cover living expenses um, and books, and we'll refund those funds to you, unless you contact us and ask us to either reduce the amount of your loan um, and, and then we'll go ahead and reduce the loan and send the excess back to the lender. So as of right now, the excess funds will be sent to you in the form of a refund so that you can cover all of your other expenses. But if you no longer need that amount, please feel free to contact our office and we'll go ahead and walk you through the process of either reducing the loan to an amount that you do need, um, or if you need to, canceling the loan altogether. So please contact us and let us know what you'd like us to do if you would like to amend the loan. If you do need the resources in order to cover your costs, then they'll be processed and refunded to you. Another financial aid question. The change in financial aid, scholarships and grants is only for this semester, correct? Assuming we are back on campus next semester, my financial aid package will go back to what I was told previously, correct? As I mentioned before, any change is because of the change in the amount that you're charged for tuition, right? And so if tuition um, goes back to the regular um, rate, then your aid will also go back to the standard rate. We did not reduce um, aid for anyone because of the change in um, instruction, how we are providing the instruction. However, if you did notify our office that you're living at home with parents as a commuter and we adjusted your budget because you indicated that you were a commuter and then in the spring you return back to campus, then yes, re just um, your spring portion to the, uh, the, the on-campus resident or even off-campus local budget. Thank you, Charlene. You are still on the hot seat. We have another financial aid question. Um, you stated that we cannot use federal work study if we are not in DC. Does that mean students studying from home cannot work? Not at all. As a matter of fact, there will be student employment positions. Um, just keep in mind that it's the Federal Work Study Award that 
um, isn't available to you if you're not in the district, Maryland or Virginia, right? And so um, it doesn't include our students who are um, living elsewhere from working at all. Um, it just means that you cannot use your work study in order to secure the position. Thank you. This is a question for Jessica. Where do we find tutoring and academic support? It's giving you a break now, Charlene. <laughs> so, um, so tutoring and academic support. Um, if you go on our website, uh, there's a, a plethora of um, academic support uh, availability. So if you go on the website and you Google writing, writing center, the writing center resources will pop up. If you type in academic coaching, or academic coaching resources will pop up and you can make appointments virtually um, on all of these websites. Um, if you need help with accommodations for a disability, um, type in disability support and the page will pop up. So um, we've you know, made sure that it's really easy to find and access all of these services. Um, if you look at the umbrella organization of the Academic Support and Access Center, ASAC, you'll find all of these things in one place. So um, either type in Academic Support and Access Center or do the individual terms, writing center, quantitative support, um, academic coaching, tutoring, and all of that will pop up. Thank you, Jessica. Back to financial aid. If the financial aid we were awarded is greater than tuition, can we use those extra funds on food, housing, books? Absolutely. That's the reason you were awarded the additional aid. It's to help you with all of the pieces of the cost of attendance. Now, every school actually comes up with a standard cost of attendance that includes tuition, any fees that you're charged, books, housing, transportation, food, and even some um, what we call personal or miscellaneous expenses. So all of that, um, we anticipate our students are going to incur during a given semester. So the excess money is really there to help you cover those costs. Thank you. Back to academic affairs. How will tests and midterms be structured? Or is this a question I should ask each of my professors? Also a great question. I love how you all are planning already for how to succeed in the academic semester. That's awesome. Um, and it means you're gonna be in good shape. Um, the broad answer is speak with your individual faculty members. So all of our exams and other assessments will be online. Obviously we won't be doing them in person. Um, some faculty will have papers, others will have group projects, others might have oral presentations, some might have more traditional exams. So that varies from class to class. Um, it should be in the syllabus from each of your faculty members and you should also feel free to reach out to your individual faculty member. Thank you, Jessica. Next is a student billing question. On my account activity, there is a negative number on the balance. What does this mean and what should I do? Sorry, I had a fire truck going by my house. <laughs> a negative number on the is uh, is a payment, right? The negative number means that there's a cost balance. And so that's the amount of money we'll be sending back to you. Thank you. Another academic question. Will there be support for those who have to adjust classes in order to work at home? Um, support for students who have to work at home. Um, so I'm not I'm not exactly sure what the person means by support. So I'll talk about a couple things. And if we um, don't answer it directly, feel free to ask again um, and I will clarify. Um, so I think there's a couple of different pieces here. Um, one is your schedule, right? If you have to um, work, um, in order to help out your family, in order to help um, defray different costs. Um, we certainly get that a lot of our students are in that situation. Um, you'll want to look at your class schedule and make sure you understand your work schedule um, and then look at the class schedule. Work with directly with your academic advisor. Um, if you're finding that you're going to have work hours that conflict with your um, schedule of classes, work with your advisor who can help you find other classes that will work for your schedule. Um, and make sure, importantly, that you stay on track academically. Um, what you don't want to do is just take random classes because they fit your schedule and then find out in a semester that, hey, I didn't need any of those, or you know, I really should have taken this class before I took another class. So please make um, any changes to your schedule in consultation with your academic advisor. Um, another piece of support that we've heard from students is um, online support. 
right? How do I figure out how to navigate all these different platforms? What do I do um, if I'm having um, trouble with um, connectivity and those types of issues? Um, wanted to let you know that we're going to be putting out um, a series of um, different things for students to become successful online learners. So for example, um, in our AUX class, which is our transitions class for our first year students, we've added an entire unit on how to be successful academically online. Um, we are also putting together an online learner orientation that's going to be available to all of our students and then building out a hub of information um, stemming largely from our, from our academic coaches, um, a ton of different videos and resources about how to be successful online in online learning settings. So trying to make sure that we provide that orientation for all of you as you transition to online classes. So I think two pieces of support are, A, how do I juggle my schedule given new realities? Please work with your academic advisor. And then another piece of support is how do I, how do, I do this well? How do I succeed academically and, and navigate any challenges that might come up with the online setting? Okay, thank you. We have a question about book rentals. Maybe you can um, assist with this too, Jessica. As being able to rent books on campus in the past, would there be a way to possibly rent books still instead of buying them from the bookstore? Um, my understanding is that that service is still available through the bookstore. Um, so if you go on the bookstore's website, there are links for both um, buying books and renting books. So my understanding is that service is still available. Thank you. Um, this is a question for um, you, Janelle. How can we verify the bank account that we added to our account for refunds? Um, so if you go into Eagle Service and look at your ACH um, information, you can see what, what, uh, what you've put in there. But if you have questions, you can certainly send an email to AU Central and just ask, you know, can you just confirm that I have the right banking information and we, we can help you out with that. Thank you. This is a question for you, Martin. When will we hear back about micro free itch refunds? Yeah, so um, our understanding is that the vendors were reaching out um, starting uh, last Thursday. So if you've not heard yet, um, I would definitely say make sure to check your spam folder uh, because it wouldn't be reaching out email, but it wouldn't be coming from an AU email account. So double check there. Um, and then if you do not find that you've received that email, I would say probably by tomorrow, um, feel free to reach out to the Housing Road and Slife office. Uh, and you're more than welcome to ask for me and I will get you an answer. Thank you, Martin. Um, this is an academic affairs question. Will professors get in touch with us before August 24th? for Zoom links and other information we need for our first day of classes online? Um, the answer should be yes. So we have asked each of our faculty members to reach out to the students in their classes over the next couple of weeks to make sure everyone is set up, understands whether they will be using, for example, Blackboard or Canvas, what books do I need? What does the structure of the semester look like? Um, if you have not heard from your faculty member, please do feel free to reach out. Um, your academic advisor is also another good conduit for that. So you can talk with your advisor about like, hey, how do I get in touch with this faculty member? Um, so both of those things are important. Um, another group of people that you might hear from are the student peers in your classes. So um, if you are, for example, in a complex problems class, there are peer leaders assigned to each of those classes. So upper level students um, who are, are working specifically with these individual classes may also reach out to you um, to help you get set up for the fall. So um, don't be surprised if you hear from the faculty member and the TA, you know, and your advisor, um, all these people getting in touch with you. Um, um, I think we're more worried about over communicating than under communicating at this point. Thank you, Jessica. Mark, we have another question for you. Both housing and meal plan charges have been reimbursed, so we do potentially need to apply all over again in the spring for housing um, in the meal plan. So they're asking, uh, will they be able to reapply for a house, housing and a meal plan for the spring semester? Yes, yeah, so the, the short answer is yes. Uh, we will have a process uh, for the spring semester in housing. And um, as I shared earlier, we'll be announcing that uh, right around the start of November. So that's something to kind of keep an eye out for. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely email about that. We'll have it on our um, web page and we'll be ready to answer a lot of questions. And as always, we're, you know, our goal is always to be very detailed with our communications so you know what to expect. Um, and at this point, we're just working to determine exactly what the model will look like for the spring. And, you know, again, as always, we're 
taking a look at you know many variables and we're doing you know what we know is in the interest of students um, so just bear with us as we kind of nail that down and then we'll reach out to you and share those details thank you martin we've had a couple questions um, regarding the student health insurance charge um, please visit our student uh, health center um, website and they will have information pertaining to the student health insurance plan um, they are currently updating that page and so you should be able to access um, information. Um, if the information is not listed there, it will have um, contact information that you can reach out and get specific information regarding the student health insurance plan uh, for this fall. Another academic um, affairs question. I haven't heard from a number of my professors regarding what plans are uh, synchronous or asynchronous meetings. When should I expect to hear about that? Um, so I think two answers to that. One, the first place to look is the schedule of classes. So if you look on the schedule of classes on the registrar's website, you'll see classes are tagged as synchronous or asynchronous. Um, and we, we throw around a lot of these words just so we're all on the same page. Synchronous means you'll be meeting with your faculty member and other students at the same time online. So a synchronous class that meets Tuesdays at five everyone would be expected to be online at the same time and engaging in that class discussion. Most of our classes are synchronous. There are some classes that are asynchronous, meaning they still meet online, um, but you aren't expected to be online at a certain time. So the instructor might post videos or might post assignments that are due over the course of the week, but there are not same time class meetings. So that is synchronous, which think of as same time, and asynchronous, which means not same time. Um, those are posted on the registrar's website on the schedule of classes. And then, of course, the um, other options I mentioned, work with your academic advisor or reach out directly to the faculty members. Thank you. Um, this is a question about um, housing, Martin. Um, is AU doing anything uh, for students who've had housing who were removed in June at to lock in apartment leases? After all, we would not have had any charges if AU did not remove us from housing. So they're asking for information pertaining to um, off-campus leases. Um, can you share information um, with the student? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we've been ready on this already and um, have put together a number of resources for you. So what I will say kind of um, in short, and I'm glad to you know, connect with students, um, as well as if you go to our homepage for Housing and Residence Life, we have um, a couple announcements that are relevant to you. One of them takes you to our off-campus housing page, um, and that lists a variety of resources and, and actionable items to follow if you're looking to adjust a lease, to break a lease. Um, and then included in there, I believe it's number four on the list, um, is that we're holding a webinar tomorrow night, um, the 5th at, um, I believe it's 6 to 7 p.m. So there's a link as of earlier today for you to sign up for that. And that's where we're really gonna get into details. Um, one of the pieces that we're excited about that is we have a member of the, uh, staff member from the DC Office of the Tenant Advocate who will be joining us um, to help kind of address some of those concerns. And um, they're also, you know, an office that is available to, you know, anybody who's, you know, renting uh, in the DC area. So we also have included their contact information um, but right up there, you'll find some specific options. Um, one other piece that we did just um, finalize today is we also have an off-campus uh, listing site that we offer to students. Um, generally, it's used for students to find housing, um, but we've also um, recently worked with the vendor on that to provide students the opportunity to list a sublet. Um, so we also have some details about that on the homepage um, of our website currently, and um, I'm waiting on a few other details for that. Uh, vendor to update that with some more resources for you in that regard, but um, those are some of the resources that we have for you right now. Thank you, Martin. Uh, another financial aid question. Earlier you answered a question in which you said that surplus aid could be used for food, housing, books. How can we get the money to pay for it? Will we be given a check? Uh, good news is once the funds disperse, if there is a credit balance on your account, uh, Janelle and her team will ensure that um, if you've applied for uh, ACH, um, that it'll be credited to the banking uh, uh, to the bank account that you've indicated. Um, typically, that process does take some time, though. So even when funds have dispersed, please allow five to seven business days um, for those funds to go ahead and credit to your bank account. Now, if you haven't provided your banking information, 
actually takes a little bit longer. Um, so paper checks will be issued and you can expect those within one to two months. Thank you, Charlene. We have another question um, regarding the AU Bookstore and returning books. Please visit um, the Bookstore website uh, for answers pertaining to that. Um, if no information is listed regarding um, postmarking or returning um, the items, please contact uh, one of the, the individuals who are listed as a contact and they'll be more than happy to assist you. Another academic affairs question. What if I was hoping to gain access to a waitlisted course needed for a major by visiting with the professor in person? I think what they're trying to ask is if they are waitlisted for a, a course, um, how can they get in contact with the professor to gain access? Um, for the course. Um, yes, yeah, so importantly, um, the way that our waitlist system works is, is not that you do it through contacting the professor. So we have waitlists set up so that students join a waitlist in order so that we are equitable in how classes are offered to students. Um, we are holding most of our classes at the same size they already are. So for example, um, all of our complex problems sections are at 19 students or fewer really important that even though we are online, we still provide that small class experience and we are committed to doing that. So the waitlist function will work um, similarly to how it usually does, where you'll be notified if um, you were on a waitlist and you have the opportunity to join a class. Um, faculty typically do not have the ability to override the waitlist. So they're not being mean if you contact them, they actually can't do it um, because we have a system set up so that students have equal access to these classes. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a, a central question. Did paper checks already get sent out for housing refunds? No, the first refunds are going to start being processed later this week. So no paper checks have gone out. I think they will get the first ones will start to get run on Thursday um, for those students that are not waiting for a financial aid reimbursement. Thank you. Um, another financial aid question. My financial aid advisor has not responded to my calls and emails for weeks. What should I do? Please contact, please contact um, our office um, and indicate in the subject line webinar. Thank so you, financial sir. aid at American.edu and indicate webinar in the subject line. Thank you, Charlene. This is a question uh, for you, Martin. If I rent an apartment for my daughter and campus opens in the spring, will she be obligated to live on campus as a freshman and have a meal plan? Is there anyone who can guide us on where to rent that is safe and accessible to campus? Yeah, that's a great question. So fundamental piece of that is um, there has not been um, and currently is not a requirement to live on campus. Um, so you don't have to worry about that end of it. Um, I know that's something that, you know, other schools have. We do not currently have that. So otherwise, um, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of student resources who already have off-campus leases, we do have our off-campus posting site. Um, so that is one, one venue to search for um, housing. Uh, so you're welcome to take a look there. And um, it's updated very regularly. And one of the things that we do is we can that um, all properties listed on there. And Columbia have a better business license. I review every single one of them. Um, and uh, so that that is one measure, although we always recommend you know, certainly you know, doing your best to you know, contact the, a landlord or property manager to you know, make sure what you're looking for in terms of safety is provided there. Um, you will find that as one resource that the university provides. And anyone with an AU email address can um, access that site for free. Thank you, Martin. That concludes all of the questions um, that were submitted. Thank you for joining us and thanks to our panelists. For additional information on campus operations, please visit AU's coronavirus webpage found within AU's homepage. Um, there you will be able to find daily updates, including updated Q and A's, and you will be provided with an opportunity to ask questions that may not be listed or that may have not been answered during this webinar. In addition, please visit OCL's, the Office of Campus Life's website um, it has a list of upcoming and past webinars, and if you are interested in viewing um, any of the past webinars, there will be a direct link um, to that video so that you can watch. Um, once again, um, thank you. Take care, be safe, and enjoy the rest of your evening.